Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 1989 French horror film, although IMDb calls it French uh, action horror thriller film. Uh, Deadly Games, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus, a.k.a. Game Over. Yes, it has three separate titles. So, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll get into that a little bit. So, um, I have to apologize off the, off the bat. You may be able to tell I have workout clothes on. I'm sweating. I'm not sweating because I watched Cops. Does anyone get that reference, Step Brothers? Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'm sweaty. I'm more disheveled than usual, so... Sorry, I just kind of have to fit these reviews in kind of where I can because I'm, I have a busy life. But I still love doing these things. I want to make sure I do them. So anyway, let's talk about this. When I saw that Shudder just added this film, I got very excited because I know I've, I've talked about it before on another video, at least one other one. My wife does 25 Christmas movies in, in uh, December, just like I do 31 horror movies in October. So sometimes I can talk her, in, her into doing a horror Christmas movie in December and so she agreed to this one, Deadly Games. And I think she had a good time watching it because, you know, it's an absurd type film. Plus it's from the 80s, so like we both find 80s films fun for, you know, various reasons. But uh, I think she had a good time with it. She had a lot of questions like, why is this happening? This doesn't make any sense. That's the 80s, man. That's how it was. So let's get into a little bit of this. On Shudder. When I'm doing this review, it's currently on Shudder. So this film has three names like I talked about, Deadly Games, which I believe is the name that it was released under in the United States, which is why that's the primary title it has on Shudder. Game Over is another another title. I don't know in what capacity that applies. And then Dial Code Santa Claus is the one, I believe, is the actual translation from the French title of the film. Uh, it was written and directed by a man by the name of Rene Manzer, um, who did some episodes, actually, he directed some of the episodes of the Young Indiana Jones TV series, which I watched when I was a kid, and that was a good show. I think Rivers Phoenix was Indiana Jones in that. Unfortunately, he died quite young. Don't do drugs, people. Uh, Manzer, actually, this is interesting. Go to IMDb and look up Renee Manzer. Uh, if you don't know, it's M-A-N-Z-O-R. He has his demo reel on IMDb literally and it's just like snippets from films he's done so check that out i think it's kind of funny because most of the times when you go to people's um like individual directors or writers pages they don't have things like that but he has a demo reel so i guess he's like looking for work through imdb maybe i don't know um manzer actually threatened legal action against the people who made home alone because this came out the year before Home Alone came out. So he was kind of trying to say, hey, Home Alone's an awful lot like this. So I knew this going into the film, watching the film for the first time. My wife did as well. And she kind of said, she's like, there's not that much in common. The only thing really in common is that it's a kid defending his house with like setting up traps, basically. That's it. And, th and that's true. But, you know, it could just be that little concept that was picked up. But I'm going to say that the fact that they were released one year apart. I don't think that speaks to anything being stolen from this film for Home Alone. It seems more of a coincidence, in my opinion, just because I would think that things would have had to have already been in the works with Home Alone prior to anyone even being able to see uh, Deadly Games. So, just saying. The film was criticized for continuity issues, which, I mean, when you watch a movie with a premise like this, I'm not sure you really should be watching for continuity issues because why are you watching the film then? Because, you know, like, it's an absurd thing. It's, a, it's an absurd film. It's an absurd concept. And if you're watching it, you shouldn't really be looking for continuity issues because I kind of feel like you should just expect it at that point. You know it's not going to be, like, a masterpiece, a great movie. It's just going to be fun. It's going to be dumb fun. And this film is that, in my opinion. Um, oh, before I end up getting into any spoilers, and I will... Um, because this movie is from 1989. I would tell people, if you haven't seen it yet, stop right here, go actually watch it, because it's worth at least one watch, then come back to the video and finish it out, because there will be spoilers. I want to get into some stuff. Uh, so 2018, it, 2018 is when the film actually premiered in the United States, which is really, really weird. Uh, it was thanks to the American Genre Film Archive. They restored the film and released it. And I will say the version on Shutter looks pretty good. Like, it looks relatively clean for being from 1989. So they did a good job restoring that film. 
it's just really weird because I saw some people on social media who were just like, this is from 1989. How did I not know it, uh, know about this until now? Well, it's because the U.S. premiere was 2018. You know, there's so many films out there in the world that have been from other countries that just haven't made it to the United States. And a lot that never will. It takes someone taking interest in it to pull it over here and release it to the audience in whatever capacity. And because that varies. So just know that, people. German distributor Camera Obscura actually released a three-disc special edition Blu-ray of this film. So if you're interested in it, if you've already seen it and you really like it, or you want to see it for the first time and you really like it, um, Diabolic DVD has it. I like to look at their stuff, and I've purchased from them before. Um, they kind of take uh, DVDs and Blu-rays released from a bunch of different companies and put it all onto one website so you can order through them. So Diabolic is D-I-A-B-O-L-I-K. So Diabolic DVD, check it out if you want this Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Uh, the intro of this, the crushed snow globe in this film was actually a really cool introduction. It kind of gives you the idea of the foreshadowing of the kids' hopes and dreams about Santa Claus and Christmas being crushed, being terribly crushed. And then after, I mean, in addition to it, it just looked cool, to be honest. It, it looked like a cool concept um and then you go to the to the santa claus which you never find out what his actual name is the creepy pedophile seeming santa claus from numerous scenes seems like a pedophile like this un unhinged dude who wants to murder and seems very pedophile like uh so then you see him showing up and he's like, acting like a pedophile getting involved in some kids playing you know with snowballs is having a snowball fight and at that point, I was kind of like, is he an actual Santa Claus? Is this like, oh, it's Santa Claus disguised in normal clothing. He wants to see if the kids are good or bad. But then it becomes abundantly clear that's not the case when he goes and gets the job uh, being a Santa Claus for Thomas's mom's company. And then he's being super creepy. <laughs> Very super creepy. So then you're just like, oh, okay. He is not actual Santa Claus. He's a crazy dude. Uh I remember thinking when you when you first are introduced to the character Thomas, I'm like, how rich is this kid? Because he's like sleeping in this constructed like World War II airplane or something. And you're just like, what the heck is going on in here? And this is in his house. So you're just like, how rich is this kid? And I was like, this is like a messed up version of Richie Rich because he, he then like suits up and gets ready and is like ready for combat. He's running around the house playing guns and he like uses his dog like it's kind of a little bit abusive to his dog to be honest where he's like throwing things at his dog and making him fall through the trap door and you're just like give it a rest man the kid's very intense and I, I had written down I was like I feel like this kid was born with Vietnam flashbacks as memories like that's how intense he seems with this stuff but I will say introducing super early in the film him having this type of training like it looks like he kind of like trained himself he's got like this military regiment for himself uh it kind of sets you up for he has these skills like he has this mindset where he can just get into this kind of like uh midget rambo mode uh where he's just like ready to go so when he turns that on it's already been set up that like that's a thing um and i mean and i don't mean midget like little person midget i mean midget like midget league that's what I mean. Uh, you gotta love... Excuse me. Just messed up my notes. Uh, you gotta love the uh, fake Eye of the Tiger ripoff. Did anyone else get that when he's when he gets up and he's, like, getting ready for war to, like, play war? That, like, it's a ripoff of the, of the song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. It totally is. And if you, don't, if you didn't catch that, go back and watch it. Totally is. But I'm sure everyone got that. The kid's hair is intense. And it's hard to realize that uh, that was actually a trend that people were like, yeah, that's a cool hairdo. Just like mullets, you know, like that's that's like a super mullet kind of like a version of a super mullet. And it made me think back to I don't know if anyone ever saw the show on Nickelodeon, Salute Your Shorts, with the character of Budnick. Like that's the hairdo he had with like the long hair in the back and then like spiky and short up front. Um, yeah, that's what that kid reminded me of. I was like, wow, man, hairdos. So it does seem like the Santa is a pedophile, I wrote. He, he looks super creepy. Like, the way they cast that character, that dude just looks creepy 
on his own, even without doing creepy stuff. But then again, he does creepy stuff. So, like, the actor who portrayed him did a really good job because he looks nuts. He looks nuts. <laughs> Most of the time he looks nuts. Um, I love the shot that they got of Santa Claus sitting in the rocking chair after he, you know, delivers presents to that first family and you... It's kind of alluded to that he probably killed them, and then he gets all out decked out in the Santa Claus garb, and he, you know, shoots the uh, fake snow spray on his beard so it's all white in his hair, and he's just, like, sitting in the rocking chair. Like, the way that's lit looks really good, but also, like, his expression, and how he's, like, staring off into nowhere, you just see, you're just like, he is just thinking about murder right now. Like, it just looked like he's like, ah, murder, I'm about to do it. Yeah, it's like, woo. So then, as we all know, the dog killing ends up happening. And when that happened in this, when he comes down the chimney, I was like, did this film get ripped off by John Wick as well? Because that's what sets that kid off. He killed my dog. That's just a joke. I don't actually think that. Um, you know Santa's crazy when he headbutts the windshield. That's the next thing I wrote down. Like, this guy seems kind of unhinged obviously because he's like breaking into someone's house but it's like that next level of unhinged when he intentionally headbutts the windshield of the car that thomas and his grandfather are trying to use to get away like that is intense who does that like you know you're doing damage to yourself and he clearly doesn't care he's just like i'm gonna headbutt this windshield that was nuts i didn't see that coming either i was like whoa okay um i wrote down of course the mom drives off the road while talking on her phone because that's why we have hands-free laws now, people. Because of things like that. When you had your car phone, not even a cell phone back then, a car phone. My parents had one. That thing was ridiculous. And you're not paying attention and you just go off into a snow embankment. That's how it is. Uh, the portion with the kid burying his dog to the music is actually kind of impactful. And my wife was just like, this is sad. She's like, this is really getting sad. But at the same time... How much, like, when that's going on, how much time does this kid really have? Because at numerous moments throughout the film, he doesn't take all that much time, and then he just is somewhere else in, in, the, uh, in the house, and then all of a sudden the Santa Claus is there. And he just keeps, like, being wherever he ends up being. But for some reason, he had a very long length of time to take care of bandaging, bandaging himself up and getting himself a crutch and burying his dog and... It seemed like too much time for the context of what else was happening on in the film. This is weird. Uh, that kid had a lot of gear on him and a makeshift crutch. It must have been very, very, very tough for the actor who played the kid to get around. Like, that was a physically demanding role because there were numerous times where with that crutch and with all that gear on him, he was just, like, trying to run, and you could see how tough it was. And this leads me to another thing. I was going to touch on it later, but I'll just do it now. That kid actor did a really good job, in my opinion. I don't know if anyone else felt that way. Put some comments down here. Don't you think he did a really good job? I I found him to be an excellent actor for that role. Uh, it was pretty disappointing, that whole scene with the grenade. Like, he made up that grenade that he put marbles inside of, and it was on the train, and he lit it, and... It, he, like, sent it to go all the way to the Santa Claus, and the Santa Claus picks it up, turns it around, and goes all the way back, and it was going to hit the, uh, you know, the um, the suit of armor with his grandfather hiding in it. So he's like, oh, no, and nothing happened. And it just kind of felt like that whole scene was for nothing, literally, especially because when he goes and runs for it and tries to grab it before it hits his grandfather, and then the Santa Claus tackles him, like, that, it would have led to something then. It would have made sense because then he's captured. But the Santa just lets him go. And so it's like, first of all, it's like, what? Because the whole motivation for this guy at this, at this point in the film is he's trying to kill this kid. He has the kid literally in his arms and then just lets him go. It doesn't even make any sense. It's like, why? And then you're just making... So then really, like, because nothing came out of that scene, it literally was all for nothing. And there wasn't anything interesting or exciting. It was very, very disappointing that there was no explosion. Like, you were looking forward to that. When he was crafting that thing, I was like, oh, man, I cannot wait to see how he uses this thing. Or the explosion it causes. Or what he ends up blowing up. Nothing. It was so, it was such a big letdown. Probably the biggest letdown in the movie, to be honest. 
because that's what it's all about. It's kind of like Home Alone. Like the best parts of Home Alone are when the traps are being used. It would have been. It's the same thing for this, and the traps aren't used all that much anyway. So, um, I wrote down the Santa can't find a better weapon than the pie cutter. He has a lot of alone time in this giant mansion house, and I'm sure he's come across many other things that he could use other than this pie cutter, which was the first thing he found when he got in the house. Plus, how is that pie cutter that sharp? Because he just, like, kind of quickly um, swipes it on Thomas's leg, and it really cuts him. Like, I don't know a pie cutter that's that sharp, really. It was weird. But he should have found another weapon, is my point. That's my main point. Santa could have finished finished this movie quite a few times, and he just keeps letting the kid go. I mean, the one time I was talking about with the uh, the grenade that doesn't explode, the time where he almost had him because he cut his leg, and that other kid showed up, Pulio or Puli, I forget what his name was, and then he goes after him instead. And there were a few other moments where he's like right there, and then he's just like, oh, I'm distracted, you can leave. It's weird. It just doesn't make any sense. It just makes it feel like... The movie is unnecessarily dragging on, and they're just like, oh, wait, he could catch him here, but we need the movie to be longer. Um, just have the Santa Claus let him go. Let's just, you know, he'll get distracted by something shiny. It's it's okay. It's like, mm -mm. In general, a lot of things take way too long in this movie, to be honest. A lot of the scenes just run a little bit too long. It really should have been edited a lot tighter, in my opinion, and it would have been more interesting. I mean, it's not even, like, full runtime. It's not super long of a film. It's, like, an hour and 25 minutes or something like that. But it feels a lot longer, in my opinion, because a lot of these shots are just very drawn out. So I would like to see a better cut of this film. I'm sure that will never happen, but, you know, we can dream. Wouldn't that have been something in the end if Grandpa shot Thomas because he couldn't see very well? I was literally saying that while I was watching the film to my wife. Because you're, like, seeing it from his perspective and everything's all blurry and he's, like, trying to aim this gun. And I was like, oh, my God, wouldn't it be an amazing finish if he just, like, shot Thomas? And then it's, like, the end of the movie and the Santa Claus gets away. Great way to set up a sequel, but they didn't. Should have taken that one. Um, it's now better... If that kid doesn't believe in Santa Claus, I wrote down. Yes. He's very traumatized. You kind of see it at the end, like the look on his face is just this like totally traumatized look. And you're just like, he was so dead set on believing in Santa Claus and he wanted to ca capture him. And then all this happens. So it's actually probably better if he just believes that Santa Claus doesn't actually exist as Santa Claus and knows, hey, this was actually a crazy guy. There really is no Santa Claus. It's your parents, and this was a homicidal pedophilic maniac who broke into your house and you defended it from him. That would be a better way to go. So the mom actually has, at this point, a really hard decision to make. Do I let him still believe in Santa, or do I tell him the truth and save him from thinking that the good guy Santa Claus is actually more like Krampus? but worse. Um, all right. So that's all I have to say about like the events of it, but I will say solid directing in this. Actually, the directing really impressed me in this film. Uh, there were a lot of really cool camera angles. The cinematography was really good. And one of the big things that I noticed is he liked to use Renee Manzer liked to use a lot of like slightly tilted shots, which kind of let you know that something's a little off like that's the feeling I get when I see those types of shots is it's like oh here's the scene but it's a little bit tilted so as it looks slightly off it also feels slightly off which is perfect in com in uh, conjunction with the person who was playing the Santa Claus uh, so I really like that especially when they have it like kind of tilted and then it's moving too those are very effective in my opinion um, they used uh, some they used uh, a lot of backlighting in scenes and especially ones where like you could see it was like an intense light coming out in the background, but there were things kind of in front of it. So you didn't see like the actual light itself. You saw the light coming out from around it. And I thought that looked really good. It, a few things. A, it made it look more kind of a little bit more creepy. B, it made it look more cold, like wintry in my opinion. And um, C, it just kind of looked cool that way, to be honest, like with, with the way the lighting ended up being. The backlight th backlighting thing was used a lot in this film, but I think it worked really, really well for the overall feel. I loved it, especially that one moment 
I think it's when um, Thomas and his grandfather are in the car trying to get away. And it's the, you see the Santa Claus standing out there. And it's just the backlighting uh, is right, the light's right behind him. And it's just like coming out from all behind him. That looks particularly good in my opinion. So um, I'm a fan. Anyway, uh, uh, the film overall, it looks kind of whimsical, but it also looks menacing at the same time. So another reason I really like the look of this film. I'm very, very, very impressed with how good it looked. It looked excellent. So Renee Manzer, you did a really good job with that. I um, already said the kid's acting is good. So I felt like there was a bit of a theme to this film of what danger parents end up leaving their kids in when they work too much. It kind of seems to me to make a little bit of that kind of um, age-old uh, argument of don't leave your kids alone too long or you're working too much and it's destroying your child's uh, childhood, basically, for lack of a better word. So uh, I kind of felt like it was going there a little bit with it, but ultimately it's really just about a crazy concept that's fun. I enjoyed it. Hopefully, if you're watching this and you've already seen it, you also had a good time with it. Uh, I don't know if it's one that I want to watch more. I can see I can see myself wanting to do it once every December. That feels about right for me. Um, I'm very, very glad I saw it at least once because now I can tell people, hey, you want to see a crazy movie that came out before Home Alone but it's kind of like Home Alone? And people will be like, what? Because Home Alone seems very unique. And then you see this, and you're like, oh, no, no, no. Although, I, like I said, I don't think that Home Alone stole from this film. But anyway, going to give this a rating. Okay, so this is interesting. So this, I think this is another one I have to do the, the two different ratings on it. So rating it amongst all the films ever made in the pantheon of filmmaking, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a two star. And I give it a bump up to two stars because it looks really good. And I think the kids' acting is particularly good. Uh, there are a lot of plot holes. There's a lot of continuity issues, you know, stuff like that. So two stars is pretty solid for that. Now, if I'm rating it as like a bad, fun movie that's not necessarily supposed to be technically great or anything, I'm going to go ahead and give it, I'm going to give it a three and a half star rating. For like bad movies, I give it a three and a half. It's, it's pretty good in that realm, in that category, in, in that categorization. But anyways, that's my take on uh, Deadly Games, a.k.a. Game Over, a.k.a. Dial Code Santa Claus. What did you think? Put your comments down there. I'm very interested to see how people feel about this. I've already seen some people on social media being like, where has this movie been all my life? Now I have a new favorite for uh, December every year. Great. I'm, I'm all about that. But you might have to buy it then because it's not going to stay on Shutter forever, in my opinion. And I don't think anywhere else is going to pick it up. So Diabolic DVD, go check it out there. Get your Blu-ray, three-disc Blu-ray <laughs> Blu of that. Which I think I saw that in the special features on that, there's like a, a hour and a half long documentary or something like that. There's like a documentary portion, and I believe there's also some interview stuff with the actual writer-director, Renee Manzer. So... That would be really interesting. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Please do me a quick solid. Hit that subscribe. That's your way to repay me if you like anything I do because I'm doing everything for free. I just need that encouragement, you know? So hit that subscribe for me, please. You can do a like if you want to. Put some comments down there. Let's talk about it. But thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.